Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm so, so glad you could join me today. Finally, I am acknowledging the virality of this video. It, this video, uh, it did indeed go viral. And I am so, so grateful to all of you who uh, have subscribed. My channel went from around 400 subscribers to around 17 and a half thousand in not very much time at all, which is absolutely astounding and I'm overwhelmed. So, welcome. Now, I was going to make one video in which I addressed all of the questions I got underneath my, underneath this video, but I got a lot of questions and I can't put them all into one video and answer them adequately. So I'm going to make a series of videos in which I'll answer one question per video because that's more manageable and I'll be able to go more into depth on the different topics. Today I'm going to be talking about chatelaines. A lot of people were interested in my chatelaine that's spelled C-H-A-T-E-L-A-I-N-E and it's the thing that I hung at my waist in this video. I'm going to talk about a bit of the history of the chatelaine and then I'm going to talk about what I have on my chatelaine and different things that a Victorian woman could put on her chatelaine. Women and men from all over the world have been carrying things at their waist for centuries. The women in ancient Rome would carry useful implements suspended from their waist by chains, and there's evidence of similar practices in ancient Tibet and ancient China. If we jump forward a little bit to medieval Europe, we'll see that this was still very much something that people were doing. The Luttrell Psalter was created in England between the years 1320 and 1340. It's a book of Psalms, and it's remarkable not for its content, it is just the Psalms, which, although they're spiritual, are not incredibly rare. I've got several Psalters on my bookcase over there, but for its illustrations. The margins of this book are filled with drolleries of common people going about their daily activities. So it's sort of accidentally become an amazing resource for historians to learn about the lives of medieval peasants and about how they dressed, because it also shows their clothing in great detail. The Luttrell Psalter demonstrates to us that it was common practice for medieval peasants to carry tools and purses suspended from their belts. This illustration depicts a man working a plow. You can see that he has something hanging from his belt, possibly a flask or a knife. It's a little bit difficult to tell. These three images all depict men with purses suspended from their belts. And this image shows that women were also suspending things from their belts. You can see the woman on the right has a purse suspended from her belt. Viking and Anglo-Saxon women were also in the habit of suspending tools and implements from their waist, and also sometimes they'd have them pinned up here, but it was a similar concept. I believe these images depict actual ancient Viking chatelaines. I can't be 100% sure, however. I have not been able to find any verification from a completely reliable source. However, even if they are reproductions, they're very good representations of what Viking-era chatelaines would have looked like. You can see that this one has different charms, amulets, tweezers, ear scoops, nose pickers, and most importantly, keys. It is from keys that we get the term chatelaine. In the Dark Ages, the Lord of the Lady was called the Chatelaine, and the Lady of the Manor was called the Chatelaine of the Castle. You can hear this language in C.S. Lewis's The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, in which the White Witch is described, in which the White Witch, in which the White Witch is described as being the Chatelaine of Care Paravel. So, Although she doesn't live there, she's responsible for its upkeep and for looking after basically a fancy housekeeper or a fancy caretaker. One of the duties of the chatelaine of a castle was to keep the keys of the castle, which she tended to wear at her waist because that's where you carry keys. It's a convenient place to carry things. It's a bit difficult to see, but this 1420 depiction of Saint Zita shows her carrying two large keys on her belt. Here are some other medieval depictions of women carrying keys on their belts. The keys were a very tangible symbol of power. The chatelaine controlled not only access to the castle, but also access to all of the outbuildings, rooms, cupboards, treasure chests, anything in the castle that could be locked. She had the keys. You had to go through her in order to be able to really do anything in the castle. It's not surprising then that people started using the title of the woman who carried the keys to describe the keys themselves, because they were both the symbol of her power and also the implement of her power. By the time the Renaissance rolled around, wearing keys at your waist had fallen out of favor a bit. Now it was the housekeeper who was going to be wearing the keys, not the lady of the house. That said, they still wore something of a status symbol because the housekeeper is generally the highest ranking female servant of the house, and the keys showed her authority over all of the other servants. Fans of the show Downton Abbey may remember the character Mrs. Hughes and may remember that she always wore keys suspended at her waist. 
in the 16th and 17th centuries, lower and middling sort men and women were still wearing purses and keys at their waists, much as they had done for centuries. But the aristocrats were finding new and creative ways of suspending things around their waists. An aristocratic man could have a separate purse attached to his belt, but the fashion for ever inflating cod pieces offered him with another option. It was not uncommon for men to use their cod pieces as little purses, hence the term a man's crown jewels. In the 16th century, girdles came into fashion in Northern and Western Europe, and they stayed in fashion until the early 17th century. 16th century girdles were very different from our modern perception of girdles. They were less akin to a slimming device and more akin to a belt. This detail from a circa 1545 portrait of a lady believed to be Catherine Parr, who is the sixth wife of Henry VIII, although I've also seen this portrait labeled as being Lady Jane Grey, who ruled England as queen for a whopping nine days before she had her head cut off, shows her girdle in very great detail, and you can see that it's made out of cameos, or as they were called back then, antique heads. The long tail in front provided the perfect place to hang things. The one in this picture is capped off by a large silk tassel, but women could also suspend books, mirrors, fans, watches, and pomanders, which is basically a, a box or a sachet of, of sweet-smelling herbs that would help ward off the miasma. They could suspend any of these things from their girdles. In the 18th century, chatelaines changed again. The girdle was no longer in fashion, and advances in technology meant that watches could be made more easily and efficiently and effectively than they were able to be made in the Renaissance. Therefore, aristocratic men and women began suspending them at their waists from chatelaines. Additionally, aristocratic women could wear sewing etuis on their waists in the form of a chatelaine. Both the watch chatelaine and the etui chatelaine would have been highly ornate and highly decorative. Sometimes you will see something that is both an etui and a watch in one, and there were also other things that people could suspend from their waist at that time. This chatelaine, which is for sale on eBay right now, and it can be yours for the low, low price of $10,500, contains a knife, a fork, tweezers, and an ear scoop. In the 18th and early 19th centuries, it was not uncommon for middling and lower class women to wear useful things like scissors and pincushions at their waists. In the Victorian era, creativity ruled in the world of chatelaines. Women could suspend pretty much anything they wanted from their chatelaines. There were sewing supplies, notebooks, vinaigrettes, which are basically perfume bottles, whistles, mirrors, stamp boxes, match boxes. I've even heard of umbrellas and parasols being made to go on chatelaines, and even small pistols. So with that, I think it's time for me to show you what I have on my chatelaine and to tell you a little bit about mine, because I know a little bit about its history. This chatelaine dates from 1888, roughly, thereabouts. And you can see that it's quite ornate and decorative. Its distinctive feature really is these little cockerels on each chain. You can see they're repeated. And this is something that I've seen on other similar looking chatelaines. I've seen pictures of chatelaines in books that look similar to this one but never one that looks exactly the same. But that's where I got the 1888 date, because that's when all of the ones that look similar uh, are from. So what do I have on here? I have a watch. This is not an antique watch. I do have antique watches, but they have a tendency to break. And I got sick of buying antique watches. I've got three. One of them was given to me, and then I bought two of them. So this is just a cheap modern reproduction watch, but it works, which is why I like it. Then here I've got a pair of fingernail clippers. These date to around 1920. And if you, sorry, I, there we go. I have to do this one-handed because I have to hold my camera because I could not get the tripod to work at this angle. So a little pair of, of fingernail clippers, clip your nails there. And then this doubles as nail file. None of these attachments came with the Chatelaine. I, I added them all later. This is a little purse. It dates to probably around 1910 and it's got a little money clip there and some places for some coins. And then back here, I'm not sure, this is probably for powder back here or you could use it to put notes or what have you. Come on. Just a second. There we go. I don't have anything back there right now. But you can just kind of put whatever back there. Here, 
is another, it's a little coin purse. And this is where I keep kind of sentimental tokens. I studied abroad in Denmark, so I've got a Danish crown in there. Here I've got a pencil. You pull on it, it goes out, and you can write with it. Then you push it back in. And then here, this is a whistle made out of a fang. Uh, oh, uh, this dates to around uh, 1900, 1890s, 1890s, and also 1890s. Uh, this is a notepad, or an aide memoir, and it's got celluloid leaves made to look like ivory, and you can write notes on that with pencil, and then when you no longer want the notes, you just rub it out and write new notes. So it's a very handy little thing. Women could have like I said earlier, anything they wanted on their chatelaine. And chatelaines were a really good way of showing your individuality because if you had sewing implements, you could show that you were uh, a sewer. If you had no writing implements, you could show that you enjoyed writing. Also, just the actual designs on the chatelaine were a really good way of showing your personality. It's like a tool belt, really, but a, a fancy, pretty tool belt. This was not the only kind of chatelaine that women could have. There were other other methods of wearing chatelaines. One was to have a glasses case at your waist. So this dates to the late 19th century. It is silver plated and you can see very clearly from this that it is meant to be hung at the waist. It's got a little chased design here and then you could use this for glasses or for uh, Sunglasses. I don't wear glasses. I have perfect 20-20 vision, not to brag or anything. So I use it for my sunglasses. And it just hangs at your waist and it's very convenient to always have your sunglasses there. There were also Chatelaine purses. This one is missing its hook, but I can fix that pretty easily. And this is a pretty standard style circular sometimes they'd have like little spider web hanging hanging down things sometimes they would just be plain beaded uh it's made out of leather and you couldn't really fit much in here but it was enough for a, a handkerchief and your punch card or whatever this is another thing that a woman could wear at her waist this is a 19th century skirt lifter so what you do is you push you put the skirt fabric in here then you pull this part up like so so that causes this to clamp down and hold the skirt fabric. And then you hang this from your waist. I just kind of loop this around my belt. You loop that around your belt and then your skirt is lifted up out of the mud and you have both of your hands free. You could also, if you're going to a ball, say, this is probably not something you do for every day, but for a ball, you could hang your fan at your waist. This is a picture of me going to a ball, and you can see that I've got my fan suspended from my waist. And this is, again, just another way of, you know, you've got your fan there at all times, but your hands are free. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed. Please don't forget to like this video and comment and subscribe and turn on the notification bell, and I hope to see you next time. Uh, if you want to support this channel further, I will leave a link to my Patreon down below. No need to feel bad if you can't, I completely understand. But you do need to feel bad if you don't follow me on Instagram as well, because that's free. A huge, huge thank you to the people who support this channel on Patreon. Mary Royal, Kit Kat Stitch, Sandra White, Emily Donnelly, V. Birchwood, Kiara Craft, Patricia Bentley Fay, and Amanda Martin. I hope to see you all again at the next video, and I hope that you have a great January. I almost said February. Nope, great January. Bye-bye.